Hello everybody, it's Dr. Zeno with 15 Minute Fuel, where just in 15 minutes a day, we'll fuel your mind, your body, and your future. Well, hopefully you guys are having an amazing uh, July 4th weekend or long weekend, and hopefully you're safe, just be careful. I went to work today, it was great, you know, we're still open, because it's just third. All right, so let's go over today, uh, just a couple announcements. Make sure you're going on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. We're there for the podcast version. Podcast version does help you save time because you don't have to watch the video, or you could just go on YouTube under Dr. Zaino, D-R, Z is in Zebra, A-I-N-O, and you could just play the YouTube and listen to it if you can't watch this. And if you're on Facebook Live or Instagram Live, then you'll be able to be able to answer some questions, like just like you guys are doing right now, and any Q&A. Uh, also, uh, check out our Instagram and our Twitter. So what I'll start doing is I want to I get to know you guys more. So every morning, uh, I had a great Lucas, I, I forgot his last name, uh, he had said, because I, I thought showing you guys me waking up at four in the morning was boring over time, but just to show you there's consistency and success is mundane and unsexy. But he also suggested, how about a question of the day? So I'll be asking a question of the day on the Snapchat, on the Instagram, and on Facebook. Like today, which one was, uh, who is your favorite superhero? Who is your favorite hero? Uh, and so mine is um, Tony Stark, all right? The reason why it's Iron Man is because what I want you guys to realize, if you go to YouTube and after this, of course, and you check out, Check, it's about a one minute clip in Iron Man 1 where Robert Downey Jr. or Tony Stark, he was supposed to let everybody know that Rhodey, his, uh, his buddy over there, or who was like charge of the Air Force, that he was really Iron Man because they were trying to save his identity, right? Because most superheroes, what? In DC, growing up, all superheroes had a what? A secret identity, right? Spider-Man had a secret identity. Batman had a secret identity. Superman had a secret identity. Everybody had a secret identity. And it was almost like they were always the hero, but they had to hide it. And they had to, you know, just not let anybody know their strengths or their talents or their gifts or their superpowers. And so the greatest thing, I really believe this is where Marvel made a huge uh, jump over DC Comics. And I really think it's the reason why Marvel has succeeded today is that was the first time you saw a guy and you know or gal whatever because say uh you know he was, he was going to say that he was he was uh his bodyguard was really iron man so he had the cue cards and he was going to say uh and then he goes you know uh, you know the, the one girl says like you know you know some people said that you're the iron man he's like god that's he's like that's not me. He's like, I'm just not the hero type. He goes, but that would, uh, he goes, that would be fantastic though, wouldn't it? And you know, you could see he's thinking and finally when he was supposed to say, uh, the other guy was the Iron Man. He looked at the card, he put it down. He had that smirk. You got to check it out. It was the end of uh, Iron Man one. And he goes, I'm Iron Man. And just, he just loved it. He embraced who he really was. And that's who he was. So I, actually that was one of the motivators, believe it or not, just the whole journey of the, we are heroes. That, that one clip, it's about a minute long, it's the end of Iron Man 1, that clip was a huge inspiration to developing the I Am Hero project story uh, because it really personified it. Robert Downey Jr. did an amazing job at it. Everybody loved, everybody it resurrected Robert Downey Jr.'s career because he, he was the actor of Tony Stark, but it, I think everybody, the reason why they loved that because because everybody's like, oh, that was cocky, that was arrogant, that was it. But there was some part of us that always that embraced that and loved it, and that's why he got literally since that movie, he was getting paid twenty, thirty million dollars a movie. Because I think we all fell in love, and there was that part of us deep down inside, that little bit of pride, that little a bit of the ego with the humility that said, you know what, I would love to be able to stand up and say I'm Iron Man too. And so that's why uh, that's that's why my. Uh, uh, I guess just, just because that only reason why Tony Stark would be my favorite superhero. All right, so let's talk about today, talking about uh, um, super superheroes. Today we're going to talk about value. The title of today's 15-minute um, fuel is You Are Value. You Are Value. And it's, not, it's different than You Are Valuable. We know that, but You Are Value. And, and, and the reason why I'm going to talk about that is just entertain the idea that you don't have to do anything since you were born. Just the fact that you were born automatically, uh, you, you had the right, and I'll even say the entire entitlement of being value. You are value. There was nothing more than being a spirit in a body, like you being born automatically puts you in value. And, but what we're told is, as we grow up, 
something would make us valuable. So if we went to school, that would make us valuable. So what starts to happen is we're, we, we, the, we're conditioned by injected, imposed um, values of society, subordinated values. Subordinated means um, somebody else's values. And it's very easy to do. I was talking about someone today where, you know, you go to school, first grade, second, you all, all the way through school, then through middle school or junior high, and then you go through high school. So we're always told our next step, right? And then after high school, if you're, um, you know, then, then it's a college, or if you're my wife's, uh, where my wife went to high school, it was get married, you know, so you go to college, right? And then, then after college, you know, what's that next step? Then it's marriage. Then it's, then it's after marriage, it's kids. So really like society has these check marks for us, these values, right? The movies are telling us what the value should be. The media is telling us what the value should be. Religion, teachers, preachers, you know, the, the, the uh, belief systems or our parents push down. So we're given a list of values of other people and other systems that feel we should achieve these to check them off to say then we are valuable. So what happens, we start to find our identity in other people's ideas of what make us valuable. And we forgot the entire time that we were we are value from just the fact that we were born. That creates value. So we forget the truth that we were value and we chase, we start chasing these um, titles. Uh, we chase these milestones to say, okay, now I'm, am I value now? Do you accept me now? Am I valuable now? Mom, I did it. Dad, I did it. Look, here's my grade. Here's my diploma. Here's the job. I got the kids. So am I valuable now? In the eyes of other people. But we never take the time to say and remember. Remember, it's all about remembering. Wait a second. I am value. And not only am I value, but I have valuable assets and gifts and talents that I could then be able to give other people. Because if we forget that we're value, you're valuable without all that other stuff, see, we can't give something we don't have, or at least we don't remember we have. So here we're trying to develop all these things to make us valuable, to then hopefully give it away or give it to somebody in the workplace, but realize, how about if we just remembered we are valuable? You know, we do have value, and we're, we're, we don't have value because we hit a title, got a grade, married a certain person, had so many kids, um, liked by somebody else. So my question to you is, what in your life, and there could be a huge list, it's very, you know, especially the older you are, so at 40, here I'm 40, and when I look back at my life, ask yourself, what are the things that you personally have based your identity off of, meaning that that thing is where is actually your identity is based off of that. For me, it was in the beginning, and it changes. In the beginning, my identity was based off bodybuilding, right? I was 21 years old in a Mr. America. So it was like, that was my identity, the bodybuilder, the, you know, they looked a certain way. There's a lot of people like the Al Bundy, if you guys remember that uh, show Married with Children, uh, you know, Al Bundy always would talk about the football days, right? His identity was when he played football 30 years ago. So we tend to find our identity in something, and that's where we find our value for ourselves in that. So, but the problem with that is that 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 subordinated thing, or that 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 thing that we placed our identity is becomes the controller and the master of our life, and how and we base that thing on how we're doing as a person, how successful we are as a person, and how valuable valuable we are as a person. And we always set ourselves up for failure that way. So mine, I uh, went bodybuilding, and then. Um, and then how about this, when I had a life-threatening disease and I beat it, don't you think for a while, me being the disease defeater or that person who's the cancer killer, the heart disease survivor, that could become your identity as well, right? So we, we tend to be, we talked about, we tend to be known for what we're obsessed over. So, and then later on it became the chiropractor, right? I'm a doctor of chiropractic, so my identity was really found in that. So that means if my office was doing great, I was happy. I was a great husband. You know, you want to be around me. I'm a great dad because the office was became my heartbeat because I let it. You follow what I'm saying? It really wasn't. It was a false identity. It was a secret identity. That's why I say it's a secret identity. I, I'm valuable and we're valuable without any of that. So if we took your job, if we took everything away from you, emptied out your bank account, took away your job, took away your clothes, took away your house, took away your cars, took it all away, your value does not change 1% at all. We think it does. And why would we think that? 
is because we have been told and we have we have accepted and placed our identity in these other things to base how valuable we are as a human being. When the real, the real truth is that we can't earn more value and we can't take our value away, we've been born 100% value. You follow? We've always been 100% and we always reap 100%. It's our perception of it. So here with the office, and it was a great, it was a great thing. Don't get me wrong, I loved it, but when you see yourself, when your identity is governed and determined by something or something else, the thing is there's gonna come a time, just like a boxer, if I was a boxer and I'm a heavyweight champion, what always happens to the champ, everybody? They get knocked out or they peak. And what happens? Their career starts to do this. And we've seen it all for the boxing fans. That boxer just doesn't know when to give up. Why? Because their identity was in being the champ and they can't let it go because that's all they had and that's they forgot that they were a valuable person the entire time no matter what they did and they wound up their careers what they go they 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 wind up being in there too long so sometimes in life because we found our value in the thing that we're doing and not who we are as a person we tend to stay there way too long and then it starts to go down and we get depressed because we're, we're have a false sense of security in something that is dictating our value but in reality we forgot we were valuable the entire time and remember, you can't give what you don't have. So if you don't think you have value because you have not attained these things, how can you give value? But if you remember, you are valuable. You've always been valuable. You started at 100% and you will remain 100% throughout your entire life. And when you embrace that and say, you know what, it doesn't matter what I do, who I'm in a relationship with, how many kids I have, how many degrees I have on my wall, what car I drive, what watch I wear, how big my muscles are or not. All that stuff is irrelevant and it's delusional. It's a delusional secret false identity. And when you can realize that you bring value to every situation you have in your life. So that's why I saying. so instead of me saying that my value and my identity is in being the chiropractor, Dr. Zeno, I realize that I am the hero. You are the hero. So your value is your hero. I've been born a hero, you've been born a hero. And we bring the hero, we bring the value to the situation. So when I go to work, I bring my value to the work. When I come and see Whitney, right, my wife, I bring my value to her and she brings her value to me. I bring my value to my children. I bring my value to the 15 minute fuel. So none of this stuff makes me valuable. I bring, I'm a valuable person, you are a valuable person and we bring our value together as human beings. I believe that's a huge lie out there that people think that they have to hit the letter. They have to read, there's, there's no end to it. And like Anthony Robbins says, success without fulfillment is failure. But if we could just say we are fulfilled all automatically and we get to bring our beautiful value that we've been given and our unique and talents to every situation and you plus somebody else come together and it, it, it's exponential value like we're doing right now, that's where things start to happen. So remember, you are valuable. You've always been born valuable and you will stay valuable for the rest of your life. But think about that. Write that down today or just even think about it if you're not a writer. What are the things that when they go good, you're happy and when they go bad, you're sad? What thing in your life dictates your emotions? What thing in your life dictates your mood? What thing in your life dictates if you say today was a great day or today was a crappy day? that thing should not be doing that to your life. You follow what I'm saying? I, you need at least be aware of it, identify it, and then choose for it to not to do that for you. You know, for, if I have to do something and I come home and I'm in a bad mood because of it, because that controlled my emotions and caused stress release and all this other stuff, now, I'm not saying hard work, hard work's hard work, but when I let my emotions get thrown off because I'm basing my value off of something and that ruins ruins my weekend, then I that is owning me, right? You follow me say, so when something owns your emotions like that, that is your master. And not that you have to be the master of you and nothing else. So just think that it just is more self-awareness to so you could live a more healthy, fulfilled life. Because I'll tell you right now, when something else is controlling your life and you have up days, down days, and you're stressed out, stress, anger, bitter mit, uh, bitter, bitterness, anxiety, envy, this causes envy, that creates cancer in the body. Anger, that's all cancerous. So what are those things that are controlling you in a way where you found your identity in them? 
And I didn't realize this till a couple months ago that, wait a second, my identity was based in this. And also when your identity is based in something else, watch this, the new thing for you, right? What I mean the new thing, the next season of your life, that opportunity might go away because you're holding on to this. So for me to make a bigger impact outside of my lane, even in health and wellness, means leaving that lane or stepping out of that lane. But if my identity was solely here, and I felt I'm losing my identity as a human being, I would, I would just get scared, shrink back and mourn versus going for something that could bring amazing value to myself, to my family, to you guys, and then to be an impact the world in, in a greater way. It's the old, you know, you can't get to second base with your foot still on first. So this is more of a self-awareness thing. What are the things in your life that you have based your identity off of, but you realize it, it's controlling you? And then when you can realize, all you have to do is make the decision that, hey, listen, I am value, and I bring my value to the job or to that thing. That thing doesn't make me valuable. You'll start to see your whole world turn around. Well, have an amazing day. Thanks for watching 15 Minute Fuel. Please share this, because there's someone out there right now that they're having a bum day, all right? And, and they might seem ungrateful, or they're having a horrible day, or it's July 4th, whatever's going on. And really they are because they, they, they forgot they were valuable. And they just need someone to tell them they're valuable so then they could give themselves permission to be the hero. Thank you guys so much. Again, have a blessed day. Be safe. Don't do anything I wouldn't. And definitely don't do anything I would. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with 15 Minute Fuel. God bless.